So we want to talk today about fullest joy. What does it mean to live life to the fullest and have the fullest enjoyment in it? And really, there's this understanding that you should have joy in your walk with the Lord and your joy in your walk with the Lord should combat and push back against your anxieties that seek to rob you of that joy. You should have joy in your relationships. You should have joy in relationships knowing that um, you are called to be in a relationship for the benefit of Christ in this world, but also you have joy in your relationships against your own selfish desires. Pouring into people is actually far more life-giving than being self-obsessed and self-centered on all your own desires and insatiable appetites. You should also have joy in your work. You should have joy in your work versus joy in laziness. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't have downtime, but joy in your work means this. You should have joy and purpose no matter if you're called to be on the Supreme Court, if you're called to be, um, I don't know, what are some of the good things we could be? My brain's blank right now. Help me out. Teacher. Yeah, teacher, contractor, scuba diver. What? Yeah, that happened. Yeah, teacher, scuba diver, chef. I would have so much joy as a chef, but a waitress, anything. Like whether your your occupation is cleaning a toilet or, you know, being president of the world, whatever it is, you should find joy in that and you should find joy in your work against your lazy impulses. Your work is a purposeful part of who God made you to be and your capacity to engage it on the grounds on which Christ has given you. The way you live into your work is part of how you experience joy in the labor you do. Finally, you should have joy in your rest and your play. You should have joy in your rest and play, knowing that there are times set aside in life. It's not supposed to be just a hard grind. Sometimes it super duper is, but not always. There is a day of rest set aside every week in Scripture. It's called the Sabbath. There is times of appointed rest and play, and I invite you, go and enjoy the things you enjoy. You don't have to pretend to enjoy everybody else's things. Like seriously, if you like knitting sweaters made of little kittens, not made of, but made with like pictures of made of little kittens. You're going to jail for that. But like, you know, if you like making sweaters with little kittens embroidered on them and people are like, you know, nobody else does, enjoy it. That's fine if that's what you like to do. Make the most of your rest and your enjoyment time, but also your joy in your rest and your play should push back against false guilt. And false guilt will always try to put in man-made rules that say, well, you shouldn't do this. And I always love to to think about when I first came to Michigan um, back in the early 2000s when I first came here and um, like people were still like kind of like you can't eat out on Sunday. You can run but not laugh while running on Sundays. You can swim but you can't splash or get your hair wet on Sundays. And and there's good things about not being able to um, have a normal day like engaged with the whole world on Sundays. But it looked like a lot of man-made rules that robbed the joy of a day of rest. It's okay to go out and really enjoy yourself and have fun and push back against that false guilt. Let the Apostle Paul's words kind of be an anchor in your life. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. Kids, I got some groups questions for you. We're so glad you're here and getting ready to engage in this. Uh, The Apostle Paul explains that we should do everything without grumbling or arguing, but that is really hard to do, isn't it? Sometimes we're tired, we don't feel like doing something, and yet God asks us to do everything without grumbling. Has there been a time this week that you grumbled about a chore or a task that your parents ask you to do? And how can you find joy in the moments that you would rather grumble in. So none of us are perfect in this, and um, in, in this task of not grumbling. And we know it's hard. Even the disciples grumbled at times, right? It can be a very difficult thing. But 
one of the things we want to do is invite you to talk to God about helping you find joy in everything you do, especially those things you would normally grumble about. Find joy in it. So your mom and dad, uh, or maybe the group's leaders have it there. It is a prayer written out, and we'd love to have you guys as a group. Just um, kids, pray this out and ask God to help you fight that urge to grumble and really engage with God in what he has planned for you. Thanks for coming to groups. Kids, we're so excited that you're a part of this. Take time now and pray together with that sheet that was given to you. Hey, adults, we're going to dive right into your questions here. Um, Some people call certain pleasures guilty pleasures because we feel guilty for enjoying good things. Kyle, for instance, Kyle watches anime, and I make him feel guilty and ashamed for doing that because he shouldn't. It's weird. It's super strange. I don't like it, Kyle. It makes me un- it makes me uncomfortable. But um, but that that's Kyle's guilty pleasure. I know this for Erica, my wife. One of her guilty pleasures is running. She's like, oh, I don't know if I should do that right now. I've got other things to do. And I'm like, no, go enjoy that. Please don't take me with you. I shake when I run. <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. I wish I hadn't said that, but I'm going to keep it in there. Like you can have guilty pleasures in your life that shouldn't be guilty. Now, don't get me wrong. There are certain things you're like, you know what? I know longer feel guilty about some naughty dalliance. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about guilty pleasures that shouldn't be. Things that you you enjoy and engage in that are healthy and life-giving, and just because it gives you a little bit of time to reset, refocus, be healthy, and engaged in life doesn't mean you should feel guilty. So what do you find enjoyment in that you truly should start enjoying and not feeling guilty about? So question number two, what is one thing in your life that you never look forward to doing and how can you find enjoyment in it? Let me ask it a little more this way. Are there things in your life that when you have to do, you grumble about them? You're like, oh, I don't want to do that. It's going to take discipline to control your mouth and to not give voice to the the sin of constantly grumbling about what you're supposed to do. It does take discipline, but after a while, when you quit giving voice to it here, you stop hearing it here, and you stop feeling it as much here, and you start living into the reality that there's things in life you don't really enjoy, but it doesn't mean we have to grumble about it. We can do everything with the attitude of Christ. We can humble ourselves and serve or do the things we don't like to do. So let me ask it again. What is one thing in your life that you never look forward to doing? And how can you stop giving voice to it in your life and start finding enjoyment in it? Question number three, Philippians 4. Five and six. It says this The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your make your needs known to God. Present your request to God. Paul, the writer of Philippians, says that we shouldn't be anxious about anything, but that is hard to do sometimes. To which I say, Amen. That is hard to do. So what are you anxious about right now, and how can you turn that anxiety back towards God with thanksgiving? How can you look at your life and have, find the things you should be thankful for? Amid the turmoils, where are the areas you can be giving thanks? If you guys as a group would like to dig a little deeper on this, there are some questions under Digging Deeper, and you can go in and check those out on the website. You can find those extra questions. And if you want to make use of them and really dig in, it's a great opportunity for you guys to really have a better discussion about the Word of God. If you're in a good spot and you want to keep going, those Digging Deeper questions are available for you. Foundrychurch.net.
So one of my favorite experiences and most joyful experiences at the Foundry Church, and I experience it here at Foundry, Maine. I'm sure it's going on at West, and I know it is on See You Monday. Um, but here's what I love. I love when we play the shakeout song, and all our kids get up, and they grab their little bolt bins, and they head out, and they're so loud and joyful. They're so excited to go. And, um, and this prayer request is really centralized here at Maine, but we need everybody, all groups from all campuses, to be praying about this because at the Foundry Church, when I looked on Planning Center, there's around 500 kids under 18 in this church, which is the greatest. I mean, just so much life and it's so good. But here's the thing, you hold that number up versus the number of teachers we have here at Maine. We have 15 shakeout teachers. And for me, I just I'm I, I need to I need to ask you as groups to be praying about this. We have a need for teachers to teach Shakeout. And the cool thing is with Shakeout, like you, you just have to come. It's all there for you. It's not a heavy lift. It's just being in the room and sharing the story. We have five classrooms, a boatload of kids, and we need some teachers. And I want to challenge you to be praying for this need. So take time today as a group and pray for this need. And take time and let the Spirit of God challenge you because I can't imagine that the Lord would say, no, it's fine, nobody needs to help out. We need help. We need help with teachers in this church. And I hope that, um, well, let me say it more bluntly, we need you. We need you to pray about this, and if the Lord calls you to step in and teach once a month, please do so. We can't, we can't do what we do with only 15 teachers, especially as we launch a new Saturday night uh, service. We have See You Monday and the different things. Please prayerfully consider how you can step in and help with ShakeOut and pray about it. Pray about it and ask God if it would be good to him. I know a few of our teachers, um, uh, one of them, I know he did last year. I'm not sure if he did this year. I haven't checked the rosters, but he's a football coach. He's one of my son's football coach. And he would come and teach the classroom. And I was like, I love that. That that dude's just in there teaching and he's pouring his life into him. Well done, Neil. Like, I love that kind of stuff. And for us as the church, we need you to live into your identity to share and the gospel and care for our kids, training them up in the way they should go. Remember those baptismal vows that you will help them by life and example to know who Jesus Christ is. Part of that is teaching and shake out. And we need you to pray about how you can be involved and pray and ask God to bring in enough teachers for us here at the Foundry. Do me a favor. Look at all the kids around here, around your life, maybe even in your small group, and ask, is God calling you to serve them in some way? Question number two, what is one thing in your life that you never look forward to doing? Watching anime. And how can you find enjoyment in it? Running from it. What is one thing in your life you never look forward to doing? Running on a treadmill while watching anime. Those are two very bad things. (laughs) It's like a combination of the worst. I've got the joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. All of us. Tuesday. That was horrid. I hope you survived it. Have a great week, groups. Thank you for being a part of what we do here at the Foundry Church. That's a wrap. Anime is my life. I love anime.